Michael Shumway Lee born June 4, 1971, is an American politician, author, and attorney who is the junior United States Senator from Utah. A libertarian-leaning Republican, Lee has served in the Senate since January 3, 2011. Born in Mesa, Arizona, Lee is a graduate of Brigham Young University. Lee is the son of Rex E. Lee, who was Solicitor General under President Reagan, founding dean of the J. Reuben Clark Law School and president of Brigham Young University. Lee began his career as a clerk for the U.S. District Court for the District of Utah before serving as a clerk for future Supreme Court Justice Samuel Alito, who was then a judge on the Third Circuit Court of Appeals. He then entered private practice with the Sidley Austin Law Firm in Washington, D.C. in 2002. Lee returned to his home state to work as an assistant United States attorney for the District of Utah, a position he held until 2005. Subsequently, he joined the administration of Utah Governor John Huntsman, serving as the general counsel in the office of the governor from 2005 to 2006. Lee then re-entered private practice in Washington, D.C., with Howry LLP. In 2010, at the beginning of the Tea Party movement, Lee entered the party caucus process to challenge incumbent three-term Republican Senator Bob Bennett. Lee defeated Bennett and business owner Tim Bridgewater during the nominating process at the Utah Republican Party convention, receiving 1,854 votes in the final round. The two highest caucus performers were then put before primary voters, with Lee winning with 51% of the vote. He then defeated Democratic candidate Sam Granato in the Senate election with 61% of the vote to Granato's 32%. Early life and education Lee was born in Mesa, Arizona on June 4, 1971, the son of Janet Nay Griffin and Rex E. Lee. His family moved to Provo, Utah one year later, when his father became the founding dean of Brigham Young University's J. Reuben Clark Law School. While Lee spent about half of his childhood years in Utah, he spent the other half in McLean, Virginia, a suburb of Washington, D.C. His father served first as an assistant U.S. Attorney General overseeing the civil division of the U.S. Department of Justice during the Ford administration from 1975 until 1976, and then as the Solicitor General of the United States charged with representing the United States government before the Supreme Court during the first term of the Reagan administration from 1981 until 1985. Lee is of English, Swiss, and Danish descent on his father's side. Growing up, Lee went to school with Senator Strom Thurmond's daughter, Nancy Moore Thurmond, and lived three doors down from Senator Robert Byrd. He was friends with Harry Reid's son Josh. Senator Reid was the Lee's home teacher. Lee recalls as a child how Senator Reid once locked him and Josh in their garage as a practical joke. According to Lee, the Reed family were the first Democrats he knew well and it was dealing with them that showed him the importance of being able to defend his political views in discussion with those who held other views. After graduating from Timpview High School Provo, Utah, in 1989, Lee attended Brigham Young University as an undergraduate student, receiving a Bachelor of Arts in Political Science in 1994. He served as the president of BYUSA, a prominent student service organization, and as student body president, during the 1993-1994 school year, serving together with his father, Rex E. Lee, who was president of BYU at the time. Lee received his Juris Doctor from the J. Reuben Clark Law School in 1997. <laughs> Legal career After graduation from law school in 1997, Lee served as a law clerk to Judge D. Benson of the United States District Court for the District of Utah. The following year, he clerked for then-Judge Samuel Alito, who was serving at that time on the United States Court of Appeals for the Third Circuit. After finishing his clerkships, Lee joined the Washington, D.C. office of Sidley Austin, where he specialized in appellate and Supreme Court litigation. Several years later, Lee returned to Utah to serve as an assistant United States attorney in Salt Lake City, preparing briefs and arguing cases before the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Tenth Circuit. He served as general counsel to Utah Governor John M. Huntsman Jr. from January 2005 until June 2006, when he returned to Washington to serve a one-year clerkship at the U.S. Supreme Court with Justice Alito. 
Lee returned to Utah and to private practice in the summer of 2007, joining the Salt Lake office of the Washington, D.C.-based law firm of Howry LLP. Lee focused on courtroom advocacy and constitutional law. As an attorney, Lee also represented Class A low-level radioactive waste facility provider Energy Solutions Inc. in a highly publicized dispute between the company and the Utah public and public officials that caused controversy during his Senate election. Utah's government had allowed the company to store radioactive waste in the state so long as it was low-grade Class A material. When the company arranged to store waste from Italy, many objected to the waste being foreign and that it could potentially be more radioactive than permitted. Lee argued that the Commerce Clause of the U.S. Constitution allowed the company to accept foreign waste and that the waste could be reduced in grade by mixing it with lower grade materials, while the government of Utah sought to ban the importation of foreign waste using an interstate radioactive waste compact. Energy Solutions eventually abandoned its plans to store Italian radioactive waste in Utah, ending the dispute, with the 10th U.S. Circuit Court later ruling that the compact had the power to block foreign radioactive waste from being stored in Utah. Political positions Senator Mike Lee is a conservative Republican. The New York Times arranged Republican senators by ideology and ranked Senator Lee as the most conservative member of the Senate. GovTrack's 2017 analysis places Senator Lee to the right of the spectrum, to the right of most Republicans, but still to the left of a handful of Republican senators. 538, which tracks congressional votes, has found that Senator Lee votes with President Trump's positions on legislation 81.3% of the time as of July 2018. Topic. Privacy In 2017, Mike Lee voted for SJ Res.34, a joint resolution providing for congressional disapproval under Chapter 8 of Title V, United States Code, of the rule submitted by the Federal Communications Commission relating to "...protecting the privacy of customers of broadband and other telecommunications services," from taking effect. Topic. Spending In September 2018, Lee was among six Republican senators, Jeff Flake, Pat Toomey, Rand Paul, David Perdue, and Ben Sass, as well as Bernie Sanders, that voted against a $854 billion spending bill, meant to avoid another government shutdown. Said bill included funding for the Departments of Defense, Health and Human Services, Labor and Education. Topic climate change In 2011, Mike Lee voted to limit the EPA's ability to regulate greenhouse gas emissions. In 2013, he voted to make it harder for Congress to put a price on carbon through a point of order opposing a carbon tax or a fee on carbon emissions. The measure did not pass. At a May 2016 event, he stated that it has long been obvious that the Democratic Party's assertion that the science of climate change is settled is little more than a cheap public relations ploy masquerading as a monopoly on scientific knowledge. In 2017, Lee was one of 22 senators to sign a letter to President Donald Trump urging the president to have the United States withdraw from the Paris Agreement. According to the Center for Responsive Politics, Lee has received campaign contributions from oil and gas interests $231,520 and from coal interests $21,895 for a total of $253,415 since 2012. Healthcare Senator Mike Lee was part of the group of 13 senators drafting the Senate version of the AHCA behind closed doors. Senator Lee eventually came out against the bill, along with fellow Republican Senator Jerry Moran of Kansas, bringing the no vote total among Republicans to four. This effectively stopped any chance of the bill's passage. <laughs> Books. Since his election to the Senate in 2010, Lee has published four books The Freedom Agenda, Why a Balanced Budget Amendment is Necessary to Restore Constitutional Government July 2011, Regnery Publishing 
Why John Roberts Was Wrong About Healthcare, a conservative critique of the Supreme Court's Obamacare ruling June 2013, Threshold Editions e-book Our Lost Constitution, The Willful Subversion of America's Founding Document April 2015, Sentinel Written Out of History, The Forgotten Founders Who Fought Big Government May 2017, Sentinel U.S. Senate Topic: Elections. Topic: 2010. Mike Lee ran for the U.S. Senate in 2010. At the Republican State Convention, he received 982 votes, 28.75% on the first ballot, defeating Tim Bridgewater, 26.84% of votes, and incumbent U.S. Senator Bob Bennett, 25.91% of votes. Bridgewater, however, won the second and third ballots to win the party endorsement. Both Bridgewater and Lee received enough support to have their names placed on the primary ballot. In the primary election, held on June 22, 2010, Lee became the Republican nominee by winning 51% of the vote against Bridgewater's 49%. Lee won the general election on November 2, 2010, with 62% of the vote to Democrat Sam Granato's 33% and Constitution Party candidate Scott Bradley's 6%. Topic 2016. Lee ran for re-election in 2016. He was endorsed by the Club for Growth, the Senate Conservatives Fund, and the National Republican Senatorial Committee. Topic Tenure. Topic Scorecards Rankings. In 2011, Club for Growth gave him a 100% score. Only four other U.S. Senators received a perfect score, Rand Paul, Ron Johnson, Jim Damient, and Tom Coburn. He also received a 100% conservative voting record for 2011 from the American Conservative Union. The Heritage Foundation gave him a 99% score, ranking first only with Damient. The only wrong vote he made, in the opinion of the Heritage Foundation, was voting for the GSE Bailout Elimination and Taxpayer Protection Act, which would privatize Fannie and Freddie. He received a liberal action score of 38%. <laughs> <laughs> Topic. Patriot Act In February 2011, Lee was one of two Republicans, along with Rand Paul of Kentucky, to vote against extending the three provisions of the USA Patriot Act that deal with roving wiretaps, lone wolf, terrorism suspects, and the government's ability to seize any tangible items in the course of surveillance. He voted in the same manner in May 2011. Topic: NDAA for fiscal year 2012. On December 1, 2011, Lee was one of only seven U.S. Senators, and one of only three Republicans, to vote against the National Defense Authorization Act for fiscal year 2012. He opposed the bill because of concerns over Section 1021, the section of the bill that gives the armed forces the power to indefinitely detain any person who was part of or substantially supported al-Qaeda, the Taliban, or associated forces that are engaged in hostilities against the United States or its coalition partners, and anyone who commits a belligerent act against the U.S. or its coalition allies in aid of such enemy forces, under the law of war, without trial, until the end of the hostilities authorized by the AUMF. Topic. Social security reform In April 2011, Lee joined with Lindsey Graham our South Carolina and fellow Senate Tea Party Caucus member Rand Paul our Kentucky to propose a plan they said would extend the financial viability of the U.S. Social Security Retirement Payment System. The three senators' reform proposal called the Social Security Solvency and Sustainability Act was notable because it did not propose any tax increases to ensure solvency. 
Instead, it suggested that the $5.4 trillion difference between what was then funded and what had been promised could be eliminated by increasing the retirement age to 70 by the year 2032, and slightly reducing the benefits paid to upper-income recipients. Topic. Criminal justice reform In 2013, Lee proposed a bill with the aim, "...to focus limited federal resources on the most serious offenders," together with Dick Durbin D. and Patrick Leahy D. The bill would reduce some minimum sentences for drug-related offenses by half. In November 2018, Lee, "...called out." Senator Tom Cotton, stating he was spreading fake news about the proposed First Step Act, a criminal justice reform bill. He referred to a tweet from Cotton saying that the legislation gives early release to low-level, nonviolent criminals like those convicted of assaulting police, even with deadly weapons. Lee retorted, I highly respect my colleague from Arkansas but everything in his tweet and this threat is 100% fake news. The First Step Act does not give early release to anyone. Anyone claiming it does, does not understand how the bill works." He continued, President Trump is a supporter of said legislation, while Cotton has remained an "...outspoken critic." The bipartisan bill, drafted by Chuck Grassley, Lee, and Dick Durbin, passed the House of Representatives overwhelmingly, by 360 to 59 votes. The bill aims to "...improve rehabilitation programs for former prisoners," and to "...give judges more wiggle room." when sentencing nonviolent crime offenders, such as those involving drug charges. <inaudible> <inaudible> foreign policy As part of the United States Senate Committee on Foreign Relations in 2018, Lee co-sponsored a resolution, together with Bernie Sanders and Chris Murphy, that would end U.S. military support for the Saudi-led campaign in Yemen's civil war. Interviewed by The Hill, he stated, regardless of what may have happened with Mr. Khashoggi, we are fighting a war in Yemen that we haven't declared, that has never been declared or authorized by Congress. That's not constitutional. <laughs> Debt ceiling Lee was criticized by Republican Senator John McCain and others for being overly vocal in his criticism of other Republicans and for obstructing a deal to end the United States federal government shutdown of 2013. Topic: <inaudible> Flint water crisis. In 2016, Lee used a procedural hold to block a vote on federal assistance for the Flint, Michigan water crisis. He was initially part of a group of senators blocking $220 million in aid to repair lead-contaminated pipes but, due to public pressure on others, Lee eventually became the last opposing senator. While initially anonymous, multiple sources leaked Lee's opposition to the media. <laughs> Roy Moore endorsement and retraction On October 16, 2017, Lee endorsed Roy Moore in the 2017 Alabama special election runoff, to fill the seat of U.S. Attorney General and former Senator Jeff Sessions. Moore had been removed as the Alabama Supreme Court's Chief Justice in 2003, for defying a federal order to remove an illegal Ten Commandments monument from the Alabama Judicial Building. He was re-elected as Chief Justice in 2012. In May 2016, Moore was once again removed from the bench by the Alabama Judicial Inquiry Commission (JIC) permanently via suspension for the rest of his term, making him ineligible for re-election for ordering state probate judges to ignore a US Supreme Court decision. In a 50-page opinion by the Court of the Judiciary, it denied Moore's appeal of the JIC's decision and said Moore's removal was necessary. Less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 to preserve the integrity, independence, impartiality of Alabama's judiciary. Nevertheless, Lee praised Moore for his reputation of integrity and said that he was essential to getting conservative legislation through the Senate. That is why I am proudly endorsing Judge Roy Moore. Alabamians have the chance to send a proven, conservative fighter to the United States Senate. On November 9, 2017, Moore was accused of molesting a 14-year-old and other girls under the age of 18 when he was 32 years old. 
On November 10, Lee asked the Moore campaign to stop employing Lee's endorsement of Moore in its fundraising ads. Lee's spokesperson said of the sexual misconduct allegations, If these allegations are true, Judge Moore should resign. Later that day, Lee rescinded his endorsement of Moore. Topic. Committee assignments Current Committee on the Judiciary Subcommittee on Administrative Oversight and the Courts Subcommittee on Antitrust, Competition Policy and Consumer Rights Chairman. Subcommittee on the Constitution, Civil Rights and Human Rights Committee on Energy and Natural Resources Subcommittee on Energy Subcommittee on Public Lands and Forests Subcommittee on Water and Power Committee on Commerce, Science, and Transportation Subcommittee on Oceans, Atmosphere, Fisheries, and Coast Guard Subcommittee on Aviation Operations, Safety, and Security Subcommittee on Communications Technology, Innovation, and the Internet Subcommittee on Consumer Protection, Product Safety, Insurance and Data Security Subcommittee on Space, Science, and Competitiveness Joint Economic Committee Vice Chairman Previous Committee on Foreign Relations 2011 to 2013 Committee on Armed Services 2013 to 2017 Topic Personal Life Lee married Sharon Burr in 1993 they live in Alpine, Utah and have three children, John David, James Rex, and Eliza Rose Lee. Lee is a second cousin to former Democratic U.S. Senator Mark Udall of Colorado and current Democratic U.S. Senator Tom Udall of New Mexico, as well as former Republican Senator Gordon H. Smith of Oregon. Lee has served on the BYU Alumni Board, the BYU Law School Alumni Board, and is a longtime member of the J. Reuben Clark Law Society and the Federalist Society for Law and Public Policy Studies. Lee earned the Eagle Scout Award from Boy Scouts of America in 1989 and was selected to receive the National Eagle Scout Association Outstanding Eagle Scout Award in 2011. Mike Lee's brother, Thomas R. Lee, is a Justice of the Utah Supreme Court. <laughs> <laughs> Electoral history 20,102,016 See also Lee Hamblin family List of politicians affiliated with the Tea Party movement Utah Transfer of Public Lands Act